Hey, Willie, your beard looks fresh, man. Do you get a haircut? No, I got all of them cut. <laughs> and everyone loves a good dad joke, especially dads, which is why we're doing a whole episode in honor of Father's Day. If you've watched me on Embroidery Hub, you already know that embroidery isn't the only thing that I specialize in. In fact, just last week, I did a mixed media episode where I combined embroidery and two-step heat transfer to create a custom graduation hat. For the heat transfer, I use Recoma's newest white toner transfer printer, the Luminaires 200, which is the printer that I'll be working with today. As an apparel decorator, it's always important to stay on top of important holidays because that's when apparel sales are at all-time high. So in honor of Father's Day, I'm going to show you how easy it is to print your very own tees using the Luminaires 200 white toner transfer printer, even if you have no prior printing experience. So before we can print our shirts, we need a nice design. And I think I know just the guy. Eduardo, what's up, man? How are you? Yeah, hey, what's going on, bro? Oh, nothing much, brother. Let me ask you something. What kind of a house does a graphic designer live in? An Adobe house. Get it? <laughs> okay. Anyways, I'm looking for some new designs for Father's Day, and I'm using my new uh, Luminaires 200 white toner transfer printer. Can you help me out with that? Sure, man. I'll get those over to you in a few hours. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much. Keep me posted, all right? All right, guys, now let's go over the machines and the materials that we're gonna be using for this project. First and foremost, we have our Luminaires 200 white toner transfer printer. This is our newest printer. And on top of that, we have our newest heat press, which this one here is touchscreen and it opens automatically once the timer's out. And it also has a platen that you can bring it towards you away from the heat. Now for the materials, it's gonna be our white shirt, our black shirt, and our transfer sheet with our adhesive sheet. And we have our Teflon sheet here, which is helpful to evenly distribute the heat around your design so you can have a nice crisp design afterwards. All we're missing now is to get our designs and get them, print them out. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now we have our design already on our lumen rip. All I'm going to do is make some small edits and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. So for this design that has some distortion, I'm gonna go in here and go into my color adjust. And I usually like to do this on most of my designs. Really, you could do what you prefer, but I like to do it just because I feel like it makes it look a lot cleaner and a lot better. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. The first thing I do is bump up my black. Second thing I do is make sure my max ink is all the way up. Then I change my saturation and I bump it up to maybe a 35 as well. And then the last thing I do is that I go to my ink removal and I disable it. And now I press OK just to save it. So you can see now my colors are a lot more vibrant. And that's the main reason why I like to do this. The next thing I'm going to do is right click on my design, scroll down to tools, and I'm going to choose transparency. So another page is gonna open up and in here, the first thing I do is zoom in so that I can see this distortion and see if it has any type of shading. So if I go to any of these red letters and I zoom in, you can see how we have a lot of this gray area around the design and in the distortion part of it. What I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to bring down my transparency all the way down. And now you can see how nice and clear that looks. So if we zoom out, now we got to see a little more of that small details. So some people like it to look like this. For example, I do, at least for this design. Some other people like to have some transparency in there. It's really up to you for this design in particular. I feel like this is gonna look better. Now, if you're not 100% sure, you can always check your, uh, your preview section on the bottom. You have the transparency page, then you have your awful layer, which here you can see a lot more of that transparency holes, right? So now the black would be the areas where you have um, just full transparency. Uh, these are just options that we have here that will make our life a lot easier well, whenever we're editing our design. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. I feel like this is perfect. And now I'm gonna press OK. So the last thing I like to do is change the size of my design. Now you could do this many different ways. You can do it through the nodes of the design that's around it, or you can go to the top right of the screen and you can change it by the exact measurements. 
Now, since I have my canvas showing here, I'm just going to try to make it as big as I possibly can. So visually, for me, it would be better to do it right now through the nodes. So let me go ahead and zoom out. And I'm going to go over to the nodes and just stretch it out as much as possible. So when you have a good design, you can usually make it as big as you want or as small as you want. Uh, just always make sure that you have a high resolution design so you can be able to do all these things, okay? And all right, I think this is good enough. I'm not gonna make it any bigger than this just so I can leave some room for error just in case, but this should be good enough. So now let's go over to the other design and do the same thing to this one. So the same thing, I'm gonna go over to my color adjust first. I'm gonna bump up my black to 35, bump up my saturation to 35 as well and disable my ink removal. Press OK to save all my options. And now the last thing I'm going to do is change my size. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to grab the nodes and stretch it out as much as I possibly can. And just to make sure I'm in the center of this canvas, I'm gonna go over to the top of the screen to the alignment tools. And I'm going to choose the one that has kind of like a plus sign. And this one is the center alignment tool. So once I click on that, as you can see, now it's in the center of the screen. Now this design here, I think it'll look better on a black shirt. So let's go ahead and see how it'll look. Let's go over to the top of the screen again and select background color. Now I'm going to change it from white to black and I'm gonna exit the page. So as you can see, I have the black screen now, but I have these lines that are my guidelines. Let me go ahead and unselect these. I honestly feel like this is gonna be the best design for a black shirt. It's gonna stand out a lot. So let's use this one for black. Let's use the other one with the distortion for the white. So before we print, the last thing I'm going to do is go over to my queue. And in my queue, I'm going to select the input tray. Instead of bypass, I'm going to select tray one, which is my main tray. And that's it. Now we're able to print. Let's go over to the top left, select print. Okay, so for the machine to be able to print now, we need to put our transfer sheet inside of the machine. And a transfer sheet is the one that's transparent, looks like this. We have two sides. We have the shiny side and we have the matte side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open tray one, which is what we set it to, and we're going to put the shiny part down and the matte side facing up. So now the machine will recognize that it has the transfer paper inside and it should start preparing right now to start printing. So let's give it a moment. And there we go. Let's get now our transfer sheet. Now be careful not to scratch the back or to put your hands around it too much because it could one scratch off or you can leave some fingerprints in there. Now our next step is to get our adhesive sheet and to place it right on top. Now you have to be careful that you don't put the adhesive sheet upside down. There's two sides. So in this case, this side is the one that feels that it has the adhesive. The other side just feels like a regular sheet of paper. So that part is going to be going up. And that's it. Now what we have to do is set up our heat press to 310 for 120 seconds. So two minutes. All right, so now the heat press is at 310 degrees Fahrenheit and is set to 120 seconds. So now we can get our adhesive sheets and our transfer sheet and let's put it in the heat press. Let's just make sure that the transfer paper is facing down and that the adhesive sheets is facing up, okay? So we're gonna put it right on. And just a little quick tip for you guys, you can bend one of the corners of the adhesive sheet so that when you're peeling it, it'll be easier for you. And now let's place our Teflon sheet on top and press it down for another 120 seconds. Okay, so we're gonna take the Teflon sheet out and you can bring it out and peel it off. Okay. All right, so now that it's hot, make sure you start peeling off as soon as possible because this is a hot peel. When you're doing it, just do it one smooth motion. And there we go. Now we can throw away the adhesive sheets and we're left off with our design. All right, so now that we have our design, 
Let's go ahead and do the other one as well so we don't waste too much time with the process going back and forth when we can do everything at once. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down on the side and grab the other one. So we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to have the shiny part of the transfer paper facing down, the matte side of the transfer paper facing up. And we're going to grab our adhesive sheet and we're going to make sure that the adhesive part is going to be facing down on the design. So we're just going to place right on top of it. I'm going to go ahead and make a little dent. And we're going to put the Teflon sheet on top. Again, just go ahead and push it down. Okay, so let's take off our Teflon paper and let's get our design out. Now remember this is a hot peel so make sure you are peeling it off as soon as it comes out of the heat press. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull this off smoothly. Alright guys, so we have both of our designs ready. They're ready with the adhesive part in the back. Let's put these on the side. And now let's get our shirts and let's start working with our shirts. Now the first thing I'm going to do with both of my shirts is going to uh, pretty much preheat them for like 5 seconds just so that I can have the surface nice and flat. So I'm going to do that for both of the shirts, okay? Let's start off with the white. Okay, so now let's put our transfer sheet with the shiny part facing up and we're going to be putting it as much as we can in the center and about four fingers away from the collar. Now let's get a Teflon sheet and put it on top of the design and we're going to heat it up for 30 seconds at 310 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so now let's take this shirt out of the heat press and wait for five minutes before we take the transfer sheet out. All right, so since we're waiting those five minutes for the other shirt to cool off, let's start doing the black shirt. And like that, we save time. Preheat the shirt for about five seconds. All right, so now let's get our design for this shirt, place it on top of the shirt, and let's make sure we align it as much as we possibly can. And let's put our Teflon sheet on top and heat it up for 30 seconds. Perfect, so now let's get this shirt out. All right, so meanwhile, the black shirt is cooling off. We have enough time to start peeling this transfer sheet off of the white shirt. So let's go ahead and just do that now. I'm going to get one corner and I'm going to try to get it as close as possible. It's the same thing we did with our adhesive sheet. Look at that. Perfect. So now that we have the transfer sheet off of our shirt and we have our design adhered to the shirt, the last step is to seal the design onto the shirt. And this is by putting it back on the heat press for around 10 seconds. But Meanwhile, let's go ahead and check on the other shirt because that one should be already cool. Okay, and here we have it. It's been around two minutes, but it feels pretty cool. So I think it's good enough to take the transfer sheet out. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, that looks amazing. All right, so now let's do the last step, which is sealing the design onto the shirt. And to do that, we just gotta put it back on the heat press for like 10 seconds, and that should be good enough. Now let me get the Teflon sheet out. All right, so now we're gonna pull it off, and when you're taking the Teflon sheet out, just do it nice and slow. All right, so let's follow the same process with the white shirt now. All 
All right, guys, so there you have it. Alright guys, let me go over three main tips before I let you go. The first one is to make sure you have a nice resolution design so that you don't have any issues and you don't have to go back and do any edits to it. The second one is to always remember to heat press your shirt before putting the design on so you can have all that moisture come out and the design doesn't come out on its own. And the third one is to use your Teflon sheet so that the heat can be nicely distributed all around your design. And that's it. Remember, if you want more content just like this, make sure to follow our channel if you haven't already. And join us on our Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram where we have almost 30,000 followers. And if you have any questions about the Luminaires 200 or the process that I showed you today, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer you. All right guys, have a happy Father's Day and I'll see you guys next time. Do you want to hear a joke about paper? Yeah, sure. Never mind, it's terrible. Get it? Get it. <laughs>